Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Rahim, reminder always for myself that uh, when teaching these realities, the many people may not have a patience to understand them and natural instinct is to come against. And what Allah gave of uh, adab in Holy Qur'an when Sayyidina Khidr was dealing with Nabi Musa and the height and station of Nabi Musa means to whatever darajat someone is, Allah's servants are many. And above everyone's darajat there may be someone who knows more and they may not have any official title. So what Allah was showing in Holy Qur'an Surat Al-Kahf is that this person whom you may see as no one may have a knowledge for Sayyidina Musa and this is a Naqshbandi shaykh Sayyidina Khidr is in, the, in our shajarah in the, in the silsila of Naqshbandiya at the 11th shaykh. So means that inheritance still runs in the tariqah. The tariqah must have always 7,007 of 124,000 awliya on earth, 7,007 are Naqshbandi and they're under the tarbiyah of Mawlana Shah Naqshban. And that each one is dressed with 12,000 different realities. And in dunya, maybe one of those realities may show from those uloom and knowledges. So, Naqshbandiya has a tremendous wealth. Those knowledges are meant not to attract people because who listens, listens, don't listen, don't listen. But meant as a food for the soul. A haqqaiq is like giving food for the body that when these… the truth will set you free. When a knowledge comes out it hits, when it's a truth and when it's filled from, li from lights it hits the soul and dispels and annihilates every falsehood because Allah says that falsehood is ever perishing. So imagine people are filled with falsehoods for visualization, a truth like a light comes like a cannon, boom, hit the chest and it shatters the falsehood and begin now to penetrate into the heart. And that's the reality that Allah we're talking earlier today on just one they saw a video which says that the guides, they guide from the soul. And they said, oh this ajeeb we never heard things like this, what you're talking about you guide from the soul. And where is it in Qur'an and hadith? And all their teachings are Qur'an and hadith of Prophet But you're not reading the Qur'an the same way. So when Allah says that, Guidance is only from Allah What do we say for the Jummah Shaykh? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadanan wa lihadam ma kulla li lahtari lawla an hadanan Allah. That Alhamdulillah that we came to this immense blessings and that guidance is only from Allah And there is no guidance except from Allah And all throughout Qur'an when Allah is describing guidance guidance, guidance, says Qur'an, what is Allah guide, guiding? Hey where's my siwak? InshaAllah. What is Allah, Allah guide? Thank you. Here's my shiwak. <laughs> when Allah said, we don't look to dunya for the weight of a mosquito wing, we'll set up your legal case. 
So Allah doesn't care for anything of creation like the wing of a mosquito. Maybe stressing even the wing of a mosquito is much more intense to create. And that Allah doesn't look to the surah, to the form of insan. So hadith of Nabi also always describes how Allah doesn't look to the face, doesn't look to your form. That Allah's caring is for that which is eternal and Allah doesn't care for that which perishes. The rotten tomato is not where you put your focus. That which is eternal is the light, that which is eternal is the soul. So Allah's guidance is to the soul. When Allah says, there is no guidance except through Allah He's saying, because this is my domain. You can call all the donkeys you want because the physicality is like a donkey, some trained more are stubborn. You can call all the donkeys you want, line them up, sit, yell at them everything you think you know about Islam or whatever, they're not going to listen and the guidance isn't in your hands because Allah's teaching was, it's not who you guide but whom we guide. And this was always taught by Allah to all the Prophets, it's a sunnah of the Prophets, it's not who you want that comes into this religion but whom Allah wants. Why? Because stressing and teaching guidance is from the soul. Malakut is kulli shay, all power is in malakut and the light. If Allah doesn't give ishara to the light of that person that a command from Allah has to come, your soul will be guided and was written on the Day of Promises, your exact dirajat was written. You can go no higher but you can be pushed and tried to go lower but Allah will clean you, cleanse you, give you hardship until you reach it through hardship. You can go beautifully to your station by doing your ibadah and your work or the reality of hardship is you get beaten by this world in such an intense way you will achieve that maqam. But either way you achieve the maqam. But it's not the physicality where you drag somebody along, you, you force them to sit in your association, you give them five dollars and then now you say, I'm guiding people. Allah has to give guidance to the soul. Isharat comes to the soul, the soul gets an energy and Allah's power resides within the heart. Means that isharat comes onto the soul and the signal begins to enter into the heart of that servant. As a result, that servant is now coming towards where Allah wants them to come. That's called magnetism. We described in other talks Allah has to send a signal into the heart and that signal will be magnetically inclined to whatever Allah wants it to be. When Allah make that heart to be guided it's inclined towards Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result it finds itself coming towards Islam. So of course guidance is through the soul. It's not the rounding up of bodies and then talking to them in a way that you're going to appease their bodies. But Allah taught them early in their life, this is from the world of light. When these shaykhs who've been trained through tarbiyah, through energies, through realities, they didn't just make salah. But Allah taught them the reality of their salah with their soul, with their energy, with all of these fires that dressing them. That when they operate from their soul every word under their permission is a fires and a light that's coming. Why do we want the fires of shaykhs under their nazar? That's why we want the fires of Sayyidina Muhammad above all. We don't ask Prophet to listen to us but unzur halana is that put your blessed nazar upon me, that the light come from your soul onto my soul and bring this love and ishq like a magnet and draw me to your presence. And tazkiyat al-awliya 
Sayyidina Abu Yazid al-Bistami was astonished in his love for Allah I loved you, I loved you, I loved you until a day in which he reached. And I found that your love is more ancient than mine. I mean, I've been cold here, didn't give the credit to himself that he achieved something and that he approached and that he prayed and that he worshipped. You don't give credit to the donkey and the body. That's why when they speak for malakut, it's not an arrogance they're talking about things so big. No, no actually it's a reality and it's a humble reality that it, you didn't pray. You didn't pray because you were clever to pray. For if Allah doesn't guide you, you will not make your sujood tomorrow. And that's why when you hear the azan you say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul azeem. Understand? When the azan is going off, I can neither come to prayer nor success without your hawla and your quwwa. So I'm telling my soul, I cannot come to any success. Success for Allah is paradise. Hawla and quwwa and I can come to no power, have no authority on myself Ya Rabbi unless you free the demons that hold me and call me to my salah. And that's why when the azan is going off we're saying, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul azeem. I have no action in myself, I claim nothing from myself Ya Rabbi, grant me the madad, grant me that support, grant me a power and I'm able to come to my salah. So everything is from world of malakut. Those whom are guiding back, not guides of the world, the guiding of the people who bring you back to paradise, back to your paradise realities then are from that. When they talk, they talk with an energy and authority and that energy enters as a truth to every falsehood shatters its falsehood and like arrows begin to enter into that insan. And they say they listen, they hear and they feel things are opening and darknesses are dispelling. And when we talked today earlier one of the brothers was saying, it's very much in computers because after the zikr we'll talk about computers and why you have to make your daily awrad. And the understanding from computers, do you think the hardware hardware is important or the software. So when we say guidance comes from the soul, in technology Allah gave us technology to know ourselves. When mankind made a computer they were trying to create an insan. They put a head, they put a guts, they put everything, they were trying to replicate what Allah makes. That's why they make technology because they want to make something, they want to have credit for something. Allah allows them, make the computer because if you study it you should find more about yourself. So the hardware that you have although it's nice and it's fancy it really makes no difference unless the software is in it. When Allah sends to the software this phone has guidance and works. You can have the best phone on earth but you didn't get a software update or download, nothing's of any value to you. Why? Malakut kulli shay. Allah wants us to understand, you cannot fast without my permission, you cannot pray without my permission, you cannot be generous without my permission, you can do nothing. And that's why on Jummah we sang, we came to this immense blessing that Allah granted us an immense blessing that we're able to make our sujood inshaAllah, we make our prayers, we make our zikr, we make our fasting, we do all of this worshipness is a gift from Allah because when you do da'wah you understand when somebody decides they're going to turn away from Islam as if Allah has cut that fires from them and they don't want to pray and they don't want to do fasting and they don't want to do anything. And you can't shake them to do it, you can't yell at them to do it because Allah reminding the Hadanullah, it's me who determines who's going to pray. 
It's me who determines who even going to mention my name in their home. In Surat Al Nur Allah said, they, they have permission from me to mention my name. When somebody said they don't want to do zikr, wrong, Allah don't want you to mention his name. And you should be very scared and sad for that. Don't put anything onto your own cleverness, that's egoism. But if you talk from a light and you talk from a reality, they say, oh he's being arrogant showing himself, oh I'm talking, I'm the donkey for these people. But Allah's azimat, if you listen to it, it's humbling. It's humbling that we have no power, we have no authority, we have no ability to do anything. If Allah doesn't send the command. And that's why zikrullah, that's why the, the, the tafakkur and the contemplation, that's why all these practices is to say, Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah so that Allah dress us, bless us and give us a good day, another amal, Ya Rabbi don't forsake us, don't leave us, don't be angered by us, don't, don't stop us from our praying, from our zikr, from all our good deeds. And the best of action, the best of action to get Allah's attention is the love on Sayyidina Muhammad because inevitably you will be angering Allah And that's why Mulana was teaching that, told Prophet don't go through the door of judgment with Allah If you say, I'm relying only on Allah you can count probably a thousand times from the time you woke up to night time, you've probably done something that Allah's going to be upset with. So if you're only relying on yourself with Allah only you come and teach is very dangerous. So if you want Allah's satisfaction and you want Allah to keep sending hawla and quwwa so that we can do all our beatific amal, love Sayyidina Muhammad more than we love ourselves. Because at every moment, Haris alaykum bin mu'mineen wa huwa ra'ufur raheem. His nazar, shahidan, mubashiran wa nadiran, he's watching his ummah. Because you love him, because you're focusing on him wasallam, he's focusing on you. He's seeing you're gonna come short and before this goes to Allah I'm going to intercede for this beloved servant of mine. This beloved muhibbeen of Allah servant of Allah but muhib and love of, lover of Sayyidina Muhammad is going to intercede for our actions and that's the importance. This love that we have keeps the nazar of Prophet upon us continuously interceding where we're going wrong, where we're coming short. Anyone like a family when you have your children whom you love, wherever they come short in their life your entire being is to help them. If they sick and they're missing an organ, you would give your organ to make them to be better. You don't think Prophet has this love for us? That you showed this love for that reality and we fall short and he's going to allow that to go into Allah's presence to bring Allah's anger or he's going to intercede. And what do we say on Jummah? That Dahr al-Jaheem, Nafqar Arabi wal Ajami. The one whom prevents his nation from the abode of fire. I know these same people, I don't know if they hear these words on Jummah. That when we're making our Jummah, we say, Dahr Jaheem, the one whom keeps his nation away from the abode of fire. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us, Ameen. give us more patience and more understanding. InshaAllah, when we come back, we have the Naqshbandi Khatim. And we'll talk about the reality of Wi-Fi and the daily awrad inshaAllah. Ila Shaykh and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sahabi Kiram, Walla min shaykhina fi tariqat shbandiyatan aliyya wa sayru sadatina, Siddiqina al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.